Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome to Time My Gaming. Every month I choose one game to review that I'm most excited for, and this month that game is Bloodroots. Bloodroots is similar in style to Mr. Shifty in Ape Out, where it's a top-down perspective and you have to kill all the enemies around you. But Bloodroots is actually very different. You play as Mr. Wolf, who is betrayed by his own group, the Blood Beasts. Your goal is to find the person in the group who killed you and get revenge. To do this, you track down each member of the Blood Beast and slaughter your way through their army of men. The story might sound simple at first, but it's actually very deep and plays a big part in the game. The game has you playing through three different acts with over 20 levels. Each level has multiple areas within it that serve as levels themselves. These also take place in a wide variety of locations. Each of these areas is a save point so you can quit out and when you return, you start right back at the checkpoint. This makes it perfect for short bursts of gameplay on the go. There are also smaller bonus levels too. It takes about 10 hours to beat the game, but this can vary. There's also a ton of replayability here. Bloodroots is fairly linear, but between each checkpoint, the areas are open so you can go anywhere and kill the enemies in whatever order you want. This mix between openness and linearity is nice. It lets you do what you want, but also keeps you focused. The gameplay consists of action-packed combat, boss fights, platforming, and story dialogue. While you're on your rampage of revenge, you use the world around you as your weapon. All the items you see can be used to kill the enemies. You can use a carrot, a fish, ladder, wheel, frying pan, chainsaw, handsaw, rowing oar, pieces of wood, a musket, sword, dead bodies, and more. There are hundreds of different items, objects, and weapons that you can use to take out your enemies. As you get deeper in the game, you will come across a bunch of really cool weapons like a lightsaber. There are even more references and awesome items, but I'll let you discover them yourself. This aspect of using everything around you as a weapon makes the combat extremely fun. The combat is fast paced and the freedom you get with it feels amazing. Finally pulling off a choreographed string of comboed attacks without getting shot in the face just feels so good. The difficulty curve is great. When you start out, the enemies only have their fists to kill you, but as you progress, they will be carrying different weapons like axes, hammers, guns, and more. Some enemies will even have armor or other things protecting them. The majority of the enemies die in one hit, but you also die in one hit. And you can't just button mash. There are only a few buttons. You have B to jump, Y to attack, and A to pick up or drop items. You have to be very precise about when you attack. Yes, any item can one hit kill an enemy, but every item is also breakable. When you pick up an object, it'll show you it in the bottom left corner, and this indicates how many hits it can take before it breaks. This makes it so you have to be careful and always on the lookout for the next object to pick up. If you're left defenseless for even a second, you're gonna get an ax in the face. And if you attack a second too late or too early, you're dead. This precision action makes the game challenging, but fair. You will die a lot. However, the checkpoints are well spaced out and the restarts are super fast, which is perfect to keep jumping back in. I love the freedom throughout the game, being able to use anything as a weapon and the interactive environments. The environment is destructible. You can chop down trees, destroy buildings, and burn down villages. The freedom here makes the action and combat feel so invigorating. Bloodroots does a great job letting you really master each of the different items, but at the same time gives you the freedom to complete the level however you want. Also, whenever you kill the last enemy in the area, there's a close-up cutscene that is so satisfying. The boss fights are extremely good, some of the best boss fights I've ever played. Each one is completely different and consists of three different sections. They are unique, challenging, and a ton of fun. I love how the boss fights really require you to use everything you learn throughout that part of the game. While playing, you find different items and weapons along your way. Literally everything you see can be used to kill, but they also let you traverse the landscape in different ways too. The ladder lets you get up cliffs. The sword and spears let you dash across wide gaps. The oar lets you pull vault up high areas. Barrels let you roll across spikes. The grappling hook pulls you towards enemies and more. These items that let you traverse the landscape introduce different platforming elements. There was a surprising amount of platforming in the game that I was not expecting, but I really enjoyed. It helps mix up the gameplay and keeps things from becoming stale or repetitive. In each main level, there are different secrets to find and costumes to unlock. These costumes give you different perks so you can go back to the old levels and play through them in different ways. The costumes can also help you climb the leaderboards. I think this is brilliant. They could have just added the leaderboards and ranks and been done with it. Those two things alone add a lot of replayability, but adding costumes with perks gives you even more incentive to replay the levels. It's a great loop that makes you want to come back and play even more. This, in addition to the 10 hour campaign, adds up to the perfect amount of content. There is also a little hub world where you can choose your costumes, 
replay levels, or continue on to the next part of the story. This is a nice touch that ties everything together. The hub world even changes over time with a story. Speaking of the story, the story is very good. I wasn't expecting the story to be very prominent or noteworthy, but the story is a big part of Bloodroots. There are cutscenes and dialogue after and in between each level. The story is also deep and complex and really makes you think. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the entire story. I wish that I could replay the different story sequences, but unfortunately, the only way to do that is to delete your save data and start over. When you replay levels, you just play through the level and not the story, which I do like. But I wish there was a feature where I can go back through the story cutscenes and dialogue so I can retrace and connect things. Overall, the story elements in the game are fantastic. Moving on, the art style is quite unique. The game has an overall western theme to it, and the graphics are simple and clean. My only gripe with the art and graphics is that sometimes the camera pans out too far. When playing on the TV or the regular Switch in handheld, it looks great, but when playing on the Switch Lite, things get a bit too small. It would be nice if they made a custom camera mode for handheld that zoomed in more, although what I did like about the camera is that it's dynamic. It does zoom in and out automatically depending on the area, and it even changes the angle. Occasionally, the angle goes completely top down or sideways facing. These dynamic elements were awesome, and again, it helps the gameplay stay fresh and exciting. Another aspect of the graphics is the gore. This game is all about getting revenge and murdering everyone around you, but the gore isn't that bad. If you don't like the gore, there is an option to turn off the blood. Also, if you don't like the challenge, there's an accessibility setting to make the game easier too. Now, in terms of how it runs, the only place I noticed any frame rate drops even burning up an entire field of grass or killing a ton of enemies at once. Overall, the game runs great on Nintendo Switch. Now, as I brought up, there were a few issues like the camera being too far out in handheld, occasional frame rate drops, and the inability to replay the story. Apart from that though, the only issues were small bugs and glitches. Most of these will be fixed on the day one patch, but no doubt some will remain. Now you could consider the rage inducing gameplay to be an issue, but I love the challenge and there were only two areas that really frustrated me. There really isn't much at all to complain about with Bloodroots. In conclusion, Bloodroots is a very unique experience like no other. It's a fantastic game and a must buy on Nintendo Switch. It has a fantastic deep story, excellent soundtrack and sound effects, dynamic camera angles, HD rumble, extensive freedom with destructible environments, hundreds of crazy and unique weapons, platforming elements that mix up the gameplay, super satisfying lightning fast combat, plus leaderboards, ranks, secrets, and lockables. I give Bloodroots a 9.5 out of 10 and a worth rating of 20 out of 20. The worth rating means I think it's worth the full $20 price tag. It's one of my favorite games on Switch and I highly recommend it. Bloodroots releases on February 28th on PC, Nintendo Switch, and PS4. Are you interested in Bloodroots? What do you think of this brand new indie game? Let me know your take in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching.